Hello, my name is John, and in this video presentation, I will show you how to populate the batch mode data table so that you can migrate multiple users. Um, in a previous video, I showed you how to migrate from a single user, um, from from an email from an email system for a single user, and I showed you how to also transition from the single user mode to batch migration mode. And the way to do that really is to look for what's constant on the source and the target system, and find out what's going to stay there and then find out also what's variable or what's going to change. What's going to change is the username here on this um, example and maybe the name here and the password might change and the target account would change. So I would change those items to variables. Um, so I like like for this one here I'd say dollar sign var one. That's a variable. And that variable is defined over here on the batch mode data table. Notice this column header says dollar sign var one dollar sign bar 2, etc. You have eight variables that you can define to be whatever you want. So once you know what the values are, you just enter your user information here and then substitute that on this form and now everything in that batch table will migrate. So that's how you transition from single user mode to batch mode and to set up this table it's pretty easy to do. You can just type in user information. You know, whatever values you want, um, just put them in here into the column that you want and then reference that variable or that column by the variable, you know, the column header, which is the variable. That's um, the easiest thing to do. You know, maybe um, you also want to create a batch list in Excel. You know, you could be scaling a migration for thousands of users. So create a batch list in Excel, you know, organize the columns how you want them to be, save it as a CSV file, which is a comma separated fa uh, value file, every column separated by a comma. Um, you can load that into this table by loading it from the list, loading from the file button, and everything will come in. So that's another way to do it. And that's probably the easiest way to do it. You, know, you want to organize your migration by batches, and so maybe you can have multiple CSV files by batches and by m machine. So another way you can do this, maybe you're migrating from a, a system that, uh, oh, um, it is is uh, folder based, uh, maybe such as with EML or RFC 822 single files. You, know, you want to migrate whatever is within a certain folder. So you can say, okay, well, from this directory, you maybe have uh, subdirectories that are organized by user, right? So say from this directory, look for the pattern of asterisk, which means folders, um, populated into column one. I'm looking for directories and give me the name. So right there under the C colon backslash migrate folder, there's a subdirectory called these usernames. Um, you can also, of course, uh, with here you want maybe the entire path. Populate that in here. And so maybe on this source side you're migrating from EML and you can say, okay, well, how about that is dollar sign var1. And so when we look at this, var1 is this path. You know, there's other things you can do. I mean, just, just kind of experiment with what you see here. And this follows standard DOS commands, so um, when you see this pattern, you know you can say, okay, well maybe the pattern is dollar sign dot pst. It's in this folder. Load the file and the name, and it pops in. Those are various ways that you can populate the batch mode data table. It's very simple to do. We are uh, transit migrate is very flexible, and you have a lot of options on, on how to do this. I mean, so. Um, give it a try, uh, experiment around, and you'll find that um, uh, this will make your uh, migration and your batch migration very simple to do. Um, that's how you populate the batch mode data table. Thanks for watching.